Welcome to another episode of That Anita Live, the talk show dedicated to providing emotional healing through sharing to help you create a happier life. My guest today is pivoting her 25 years of corporate human resources experience into her own platform, helping women improve their careers and companies improve their work environments. Lisa Anderson is the president of Positively In Pursuit. Welcome, Lisa Anderson, to the show. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for having me. Now, Lisa, usually, you know, to the to the intro, I'll add the person's like college they went to or things. That, but since you hit me right out the box <laughs> with 25 years yes. of HR experience. Yes. Professor. Yes. I will yes. talk about you being an adjunct professor at, at UM. U yeah, University of Maryland, uh -huh. University College, UMUC. UMUC. Yes. Okay. Yes. And 25 years in HR, that means you've seen quite a bit <laughs> over my HR career. Yes, I have. So, yes, yeah, so I am an adjunct instructor or professor. Okay. I teach undergrad human resource classes. Um, UMUC is, uh, have campuses all over the world, uh -huh. and they have a large military uh, presence, oh, a lot of military people okay. that take the classes. So it's been, I teach online, and it's been very interesting um, helping, you know, the our veterans and our, our right. service men and women who are working towards their uh, degrees. All right, Professor Anderson. Yes, yes. Right. And then the 25 years of human resource experience, yes. I have seen quite a bit <laughs> <laughs> over my career, oh, over my career. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ways that emotional baggage shows up in the workplace. Yes, yes. Whether it's divorce, Yes. Uh, child sexual assault, mm -hmm. domestic violence, or even if it's somebody that um, maybe even grew up, say, in an environment like Detroit or Chicago right now, yes. where there's a high amount of crime and dysfunction and children are, are emotionally constantly bouncing off the wall, so to say. Yes. Because like, there are gunshots here, there's an ambulance there, mm -hmm. there's, there's always something going on. Yes. Well, it's interesting that you say that because... Life happens, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of things that we deal with in our personal lives. And it's unrealistic to think yeah. that some of that doesn't come into the workplace yeah. Yeah. when we come, you know, come to work every day, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. five days a week, uh -huh. 40 to 50 hours a week, yes. you know. So, um, you know, so as an HR professional, you know, you really has to be aware of that. Everybody's dealing with their own personal issues. And sometimes it shows up in the workplace, mm. unfortunately, and not so good behavior, mm. especially if they're not addressing it or working on it. Yeah. You know, it, it could really show up in, in not so good ways <laughs> in the workplace, <laughs> unfortunately. So let's go through a few scenarios. Sure, sure, yes. Um, Let me see if I've never seen, heard or seen it, because that would be no, interesting. I'm sure you have. Okay, Because okay. for instance, we all have that co-worker that is loud, boisterous, yes. negative. You don't tell me what, why does she got to be CC'd on all of my emails? She oh. don't need to see all my emails. What you doing in my cube? Get out of my cube. You don't need to be over there. I'm not doing this. You always mad at me. Why don't you go up to any, oh. everybody, yes. whether they're short and sweet or, or tall and thick bone or boisterous, they come in all shapes, sizes yes. and colors. Yes. So that is what I call the employee some, the, uh, that has a, a bit of anger. <laughs> Just, just, a week. just a little bit of anger. And the way it shows up in the workplace is just like you said, extreme, the yelling and the, you know, screaming, right. uh, that, right. that's pretty extreme in the workplace. Um, but just even subtle, um, negative, yeah. Yeah. where uh, employees or coworkers don't want to work with the person. Or we avoid the person because we just don't want to deal with the person. Yeah. 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 Now, the extreme is the yelling and the screaming. Well. So, and I have, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, mediated, you know, between a manager and an employee that, you know, they're screaming and yelling. And it's like, okay, we, this is a professional workplace and we have to figure out some different ways to communicate other than yelling and screaming because so, that's not acceptable in the workplace. So from the, from the manager's perspective, yes. what are some of the things that they can do 
to try and reach that employee? Yes, sure. So a manager, especially if they're giving tasks or giving, you know, mm -hmm. work um, instructions out, um, pulling the person to the side, making sure if it's the screaming and yelling, okay, first of all, there's a way we can communicate without the screaming and yelling. Um, and so really focusing on how can we communicate better? And if it is screaming and yelling, how can I help you stop the screaming and the yelling? What do you need from me as your manager mm -hmm. to work on this piece, to work on this communication issue? Um, and so that's one way. Now some managers won't even go there. No. They're like, I'm just not going there. I'm going to avoid it at mm -hmm. all costs which, which, because I just don't want to deal with which it. Which just spreads the toxicness all over the work environment and, and when it hits your medium or your top performers it drags all of them down yes and so that's why it's so important for managers to address issues mm -hmm. um, and and not avoid and, and a lot of managers avoid because they don't want the conflict yeah. a lot of managers are conflict you know yeah. oh I don't want to I just don't want to deal with it but unfortunately if you don't address it and mm -hmm. and deal with it head-on mm -hmm. it's going to affect the rest of your, yeah. you know, your work team, yeah, right? If you don't it address does. this with the individual. So, okay, now let's flip to the other side of the desk. Mm -hmm. How do we as employees always remain self-aware yes. of ourselves and our behavior mm -hmm. so that we don't become the toxicness that's in the environment? Yeah, so um, one big thing is um, be open to feedback. Mm -hmm. Then there's one thing if you're not getting any feedback, right? Right. But right. a lot of times people are giving feedback. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we as the employee, we're not open to the feedback. Even if your coworkers are avoiding you. That's feedback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of verbal, uh -huh. Uh -huh. that is, you can, body language, yeah. right? Yeah. That's feedback. And I have seen some employees that will come and ask for feedback. Well, why isn't, you know, why don't I get picked for certain projects yeah. or, yeah. and so then they're looking for the feedback and I've seen managers just, they don't want to go there. So they're like, oh no, it's okay. Like why don't I ever get picked for the tiger team when special projects yes, come back? Yes, yes. And if so they're yeah. looking for the feedback. So as a, as a manager, it's up to you to, to give them the feedback. And don't wait for the performance review to give the feedback. <laughs> Say that again. Don't wait, what camera? This don't right. wait, <laughs> don't Great. wait for the performance review to give feedback. One more time. Don't wait for the performance <laughs> review to give feedback. Some, that's right. what I, I've mm -hmm. seen over 25 years that mm -hmm. we go the whole year. Yes. And then the employee thinks they're doing fine because mm -hmm. no one has said mm -hmm. any different. And then we get to the performance review meeting. And just want to slice people up. Yes. And yes. you haven't given them a chance to. You haven't given them a chance and now you're dinging them, right? right. You're bringing their, right. their review score right. down. So we encourage, especially, you know, it, over my 25, yeah. constant feedback yeah. so people have time to correct. It shouldn't, the performance review, the employee should not be surprised. Okay, now let's say we have a sexual assault survivor. Okay. Yes. And she has a, she mm -hmm. is the employee, mm -hmm. has a male manager. Yes. But whenever that male manager calls her into the office and closes the door, mm -hmm. she hyperventilates. Oh my goodness. And he yeah. freaks out because he doesn't know why. Yes. What's a good way for that situation, let's say, to be handled first from the employee side? So that's a sensitive situation. Mm -hmm. And because her manager is a male, she may not be comfortable and saying to the to the, her manager what has happened to her. Mm -hmm. So my advice to the employee, find someone, hopefully an HR that you trust, someone that you can trust. If you're not comfortable having a conversation with your manager, give permission for that HR person to engage. Um, and when I say permission, I don't mean for them to share all of your business, right? right? You right, know? right. But at least give the uh, permission so the um, HR person can at least have a conversation with the manager yeah. and make him aware that there's a sensitive situation. And when you have a meeting, don't close the door or don't be one-on-one, -on -one, male, yeah. female. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or um, if she's comfortable, have a, a female HR rep um, in the yeah. room. You know, yeah. um, because the manager is not aware, and, and you're right. If he if he doesn't know, he can't. You so, know, he can't so now do anything. If, he, if 
that's flipped to the other side of the desk. Sure. And as the male manager, if he just notices her physical changes. Yes. And where she starts to breathe heavier, her eyes are down and she oh. never looks at him. Mm -hmm. What should he do to, 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 to mitigate but not escalate that situation? Yes. Well, if he notices some physical, uh, you know, changes, mm -hmm. Um, then he should probably stop the meeting, you know, or if he acts and she's not comfortable, mm -hmm. don't go there, just stop the meeting mm -hmm. and come to HR, get some advice. Like, look, I just had this meeting <laughs> right. and I'm not sure right. what's going on, but someone, I need help. Mm -hmm. um, instead of just not, you know, just going on with the meeting and you see Acting her. Acting like nothing's happening. Exactly, yeah. avoiding yeah. the whole entire yeah, situation. That's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. So ask for help. If you're not sure, look, hey, I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> can somebody help me or yeah. give me some advice? Yeah. And, and then that way we can, you know, we can help both parties because that is a very uncomfortable situation for her and him, you know, if he's not aware of, of what's going on. Hopefully um, if, when she comes to HR, if she ha isn't, um, uh, haven't been able to get some help, yes. then we can refer her to some resources. Yeah to get some help yeah. as well. The employee yeah. assistance program and making sure that we connect her with someone that can really help her. Yeah, and I, not, I, there are a lot of nonprofits out here also Absolutely. that are assisting survivors build up their confidence and their courage again. Absolutely. So there's, there's a lot of resources yes. out there, yeah. yeah. Now let's skip to, say the employee is a top performer. Yes. There are mm -hmm. eight members on the team. Okay. But they are all low performers. Hmm. So the manager assigns all of the hot projects, all of the high profile projects, anything urgent, got to get it done now to the top performer. Yes. And the top performer, their patience is getting thin. Oh, yeah. We're burning the top performer <laughs> right on out. <laughs> so, so what are some good ways? <laughs> yeah. Because the, the manager just seems to be oblivious. Oh, no. But everybody else notices, I mean, his patience in oh. the office is ice thin. Ah, uh, not a good situation. So what you have in that, with that, mm -hmm. you have a top performer, right. eight other team members mm -hmm. who are not performing. At all. At all. Mm -hmm. I was going to say low performance, well, but not low, perform. low, but <laughs> performing at all. And so you take the risk of burning the top performer out. Mm -hmm. And of course, if he's not getting any relief, he's going to do yeah. one or two well, things. We, we, he's going to leave. We just took a two hour lunch, but we brought you a salad. We see you working on that project. Really? So, um, you have fun over there. Okay. No. We, yeah. So, the, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> So while everybody's at lunch, uh -huh. you're going to bring him a salad uh -huh. uh, to enjoy mm -hmm. in between him trying to get the urgent yes. project out yes. the door. No, yes. no, no, no. But for the manager, you know, you have a team of eight and you're piling on one individual, mm -hmm. your top person, burning them out yes. where the rest of the team is just there. Okay. And so that's a manager not holding accountability. Mm -hmm. Right. Because why keep piling on your top performer? The last thing you want is your superstar to walk right out the door. Right. And so now it's time to either train. I don't know why the other eight are not engaged, but what's mm -hmm. going on? You got to peel back the onion on that and then start assigning tasks and holding folks accountable for that. Mm -hmm. and, and giving the top performer a break. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I understand he's a top performer, yeah. but it's not fair to him to keep piling on the work just because they know he's going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other folks are like kicking back and looking yes, and watching. <laughs> well, we're going to pray for the top performer and we'll be right back after this. <laughs> oh, wow. What if I told people? And we're back. We're sitting with. Professor, oh. <laughs> 25 year HR veteran, Lisa Anderson, and she yes. is schooling us on the best ways to handle toxicness in the work environment. Yes. Both from the employee perspective and, and the from manager. the manager perspective, because yes. we're all responsible. Absolutely. For the work culture. Absolutely. So, what are some of the, I guess, top three ways mm -hmm. that everybody, you know, from any perspective, manager or employee mm -hmm. can make the work environment pleasurable. 
So number one, and again, just from what I've seen mm -hmm. over my career, mm -hmm. and it's easier said than done, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Try to avoid engaging in the office politics. Mm. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's... It, just try. But some people feel <laughs> as if that's the only way they're going to get ahead. But nine times out of ten, it's disruptive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so easy to get sucked in, even if you try to stay out of it. Yeah. It's so easy to get sucked in. It but is. once the politics start happening, as an employee, sometimes you're not even, uh, you know, you want to set a boundary mm -hmm. and try not to, to go there. But usually a lot of the conflict that I see in the workplace, mm -hmm. unfortunately, there's a lot of he said, she said. Yes. There's a lot of, oh, I don't like her, I don't like him. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. we, oh, oh we're, we're Facebook friends. Yes. And, yes. and yes. now I'm mad mm -hmm. because, you know, something has happened. I saw you had a party and you invited everybody else from the office but me. Yes, yes. And then there's, then mm -hmm. there's the drama, right? <laughs> and so... Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you have a manager that's like watching the whole thing is like, I don't want to get involved. It's drama, you know, mm -hmm. and there, and so and then it escalates. Yes. To the point that mm -hmm. it becomes very disruptive. Mm -hmm. And then it could is, sometimes it gets to the point point where performance is then lacking. Yeah. And so and then we are addressing a whole nother issue. Right. Instead of, you know, if we could have nipped it in the bud. Early uh, on. Yeah. Early on. So uh, if you feel, you know, that you are in a situation okay. where that is happening to you, mm -hmm. try to engage early either with your manager or HR and try to get some advice on how to navigate the, the, the landmine. <laughs> she said landmine. Landmine. Because you step your toe. Sometimes it's just the whole thing blows just up. blows up. It yeah. Does. So uh, so that's one thing. I, a lot of that, uh, a lot of issues come around that uh, office politicking. Yes, it does. Um, yes, it does. You know, um, it's a, it's, you know, I tell people, you know, can we just come to work, do our job oh, and dude. go home? <laughs> Mm -mm. And sometimes that is just not the no. case. So, mm -hmm. so that's the first thing. If you can stay out of office politics, if you can try not to get sucked in. And if you feel yourself like getting okay. pulled in, mm -hmm. try to go to someone that's trusted where you can get some advice on uh, how to stay. I look, I don't want to be involved in that. Uh -huh. You know, I want to stay over here, you know, and if that's not your manager that you can go to right. see if you can find someone within the HR, it could even be a mentor that you can run a situation by mm -hmm. to get some advice on how to handle. Okay. So that's number one. So number two, if you're a manager, you have to address issues mm. early mm. and not wait. Well, okay. Because if you don't address them early, mm -hmm. it just adds to the toxic workplace. Because nine times out of 10, the issue is not going to go away just because we look the other way. Right. So address the issue early. Mm -hmm. And if you're not comfortable addressing the issue early, this is one big thing I, I like to say. A lot of managers don't come to HR because they're like, oh, I don't want HR involved. Right. And what that means is you can just come to us for advice. We don't have to come and sit in the meeting with you with your employee. Mm -hmm. We're there to e even advise you on how to handle. It may, or, need, or, it, it may not even be time for HR to come in. Or the feeling as well. If I go to HR, I got to document everything. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the one thing. Well, come to us early before we even get to that point, right? It may be just even for you to have a conversation with someone and you're not documenting it or whatever. They don't ask me for all my paperwork. Yes, so what that's the I stigma we have, have right? Now, we do like anything. documentation, but... <laughs> Come to us early, you know, before it gets out of hand. Because nine times out of ten, you come to us late, then we are asking you, okay, how long has this been going on? Mm -hmm. Six months. What have we done? Mm -hmm. Oh, nothing? Mm -hmm. You haven't had any conversation? <laughs> <laughs> then we're like, okay, well, where are we? Right. We're trying to assess the situation at that point. So if you can, if you see things going into a direction, you know, try to engage early before. Mm -hmm. So... Don't play off as politics. Yes. And as a manager, address stay, stay on the pulse yes. of your culture and your environment. Absolutely. And then the third thing, 
because we are human beings, mm -hmm. right? And, and we can't expect people to shut it off okay. when they come into the workplace, mm -hmm. right? Stuff, life happens, stuff is going on in people's personal lives. Mm -hmm. So, and they, and yes, they bring it to work sometimes. So if you see someone that is struggling. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. Or you see a difference or a change in behavior, have some compassion and reach out to the person, manager, or at least let, uh, notify us. Okay. So HR, we can reach out and just see if we can be supportive mm. to the individual, to the employee. Yeah. Um, because sometimes that's all it takes is, you know, making us aware if we're not aware. And if you're not comfortable in doing it, then let us reach out and just say, hey, how can we support you? And like I said earlier, you know, there's so many different resources uh -huh. that we can connect an individual with, yeah. you know, to try to get some assistance because we don't want our employee struggling. Right. Yeah. Right. So that, that does negatively. A fact. If you have one employee that's top, and even if you have some medium ones and some low ones, once you don't address what's mm -hmm. going on, the negativity that's going on in the office, mm -hmm. it brings everything else down. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, again, just, you know, being aware, you know, and if you, you know, especially someone that's on your team, if you're a manager okay. or even a coworker, right? Uh -huh. We, you know, you're talking about the cues. We work yeah. side by side, yes, right? Do. Yes, we and do. so we, we sometimes we're talking, we're sharing, mm -hmm. and sometimes we notice our coworker something's different. I can hear different. you when the school calls. Are you upset because that child got Yes, again? yes. I can hear you when you're at home and well, you're in the office, but your husband calls because he can't find his black patent leather shoes. <laughs> I can hear you in the office when you're sitting over there and you're you're talking to your coworker, right. but not realizing that you're in an open work environment and you're having this conversation about uh, whether you and your husband are arguing because are you and your wife are arguing right. because your five year old wants a cell phone. Everybody in school has a cell phone. Why yes. can't I have a cell phone? Yes. So for you to then think that. There's any level of privacy right. when you discuss it in an open environment. Yes. That it's that's unrealistic to, <laughs> to think that you're gonna have that privacy. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, and so again, relationships happen, right? Yeah, your coworkers yeah. and your colleagues and you you know, you're now, building relationships. With all this drama in HR, mm -hmm. because it, it is, it is. Why start your own leadership <laughs> and career coaching company. Yes, because I'm in HR and I've seen so many mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and I see sp particularly women leaders struggling. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, there's a little bit of, of me too in this because, you know, as I've moved up the corporate ladder, uh -huh. you know, I know what things that I wish I had you know, when I was okay. coming up yeah. the corporate yeah. ladder. So I just have a passion from women managers, you know, to, again, try to find their voice mm -hmm. in this, you know, environment, this corporate environment. Okay. Sometimes we're the only female on teams. True. You may be the true. only minority Very on true. a team, Very you know, on true. an executive team. I've yeah. been there. I've been the only female and minority in a, bo in a room, mm -hmm. you know, full of men. And I how do to. you find your voice? and have that courage to speak up and let your voice be known. And so I just have a passion for that. I work with women on executive presence, leadership presence. How do okay. you show up okay. um, in a room? You know, how do you present yourself? Because you say something when you walk in the room before you've even opened your mouth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I just have that passion yes, of working. How does a female leader mm -hmm. be assertive Yes. Not aggressive. Yes. And not get that B nickname. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, we sometimes we do get the bad rep. You know, a male can act the same way Ooh, in the workplace and will be rewarded. That. Be say, rewarded for say that, that. Right? That. <laughs> Let's keep say it real. It. <laughs> but when women mm -hmm. show that, you know, hey, I know my stuff. Yes. Hey, I'm in a, I can contribute to this conversation. Mm -hmm. I know my stuff, I, I can contribute, and I add value yes. to this conversation. And when we speak up sometimes, everybody's like, oh, mm -hmm. 
But and sometimes we, we do have to be a little aggressive to be heard because sometimes we're looked over. Very much so. Yes. Yes. And so you put an idea on the table and then, you know, everybody kind of brushes by it. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Bobby says the same idea and everybody's like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, thank you, Bobby. I'm glad you agree with me. <laughs> I put that idea on the table 10 minutes ago. Now let's let's talk about da 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 da. Right. You know. Right. And but it takes courage to to do that. You know, some women leaders will retreat because they're not being heard. They will push back. Mm -hmm. And because they're like, okay, no one's listening anyway, so why should I even, you know, try to, you know, show them how I can add value. I do bring knowledge to the table. And so I just, I, you know, I know how I felt in situations mm -hmm. like that. And so if I can help somebody <laughs> as they're come, going up their own career yes. ladder. Okay. Um, and so, you know, that takes some self-reflection, mm -hmm. some self-awareness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I, I, I coach on, you know, you know. Whatever, you, you know, everybody's not the same. You can't do this cookie cutter thing. Right, right. It's whatever is authentic to you and your personality. You know, my personality is up like, really? I just